Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. Rivington here, joined by I Will Dominate, a team liquid who just took down enemy esports quite handedly, if I'm going to do say so myself. You, judge, you said yourself, you're a little sad, your KDA just got hit, but coming into that game, Dominant, you guys got some amazing power picks. How did it feel just coming out of Champion Select? Um, it, it, felt, it felt all right. Um, I think we had a really good ban when they banned LeBlanc and we banned Kog'Ma. I think that, that was um, a really good adaptation we made because it felt like they kind of wanted a Kog'Ma comp and Varus isn't as strong of a poke champion as um, Kog'Ma. So I think we kind of uh, threw them for a loop there. And then um, we just ended up getting uh, comfort picks for us all around the board. So 3-0 now for you guys. Last split, it happened in the 2-0 and you said, keep it reserved. You know, there's still a long split to go. Are you guys kind of keeping that mentality still or is it kind of full steam ahead? Um, yeah, we, we still have the same mentality. I mean, we haven't beat a top team yet. We've been playing like kind of like the middle to lower standing teams, or at least the predicted middle to lower standing teams. So I think that it's just kind of, uh, it's, it's good to win these games. I mean, we kind of have a history of losing to the lower seeded teams and doing well against the top teams, but at least if we're getting our wins over the lower seeded teams, then hopefully when we um, beat the, hopefully when we go into the games versus the top teams, we're able to get some wins and we can actually get a good playoff standing for once. All right, man, and talk to me a few more questions about the dynamic. It's definitely changed. You guys look so much more solid. Piglet's on his game again. What's the dynamic been like, and what was that change? Um, I just think we're a lot more comfortable. I mean, we kind of just have a more friendly team environment. I mean, uh, Phoenix and Piglet both speak a lot more English now, so we can joke around the same way that, like, the old team used to. So I think it's just like we're all more comfortable around each other. We have, like, our own inside jokes and everything. So uh, having that, like, joking and, like, happy side kind of, helps if we go through like bad days of scrims, we bounce back a lot quicker like as a unit. Awesome, and final question, you guys have Gravity tomorrow, moving all tech now on that team. How are you feeling about that matchup? Uh, we don't really know that much about that team. Uh, Move is kind of a new player um, to LCS, so I don't really know what to expect out of him. I think our team play should be better. That's how we've been able to pull out these victories, but um, they're all really skilled individual players, so they could always get ahead early game, so we gotta watch out for that. All right, Dom, congrats on the win. Best of luck in the rest of the season. Right now, we're going to throw it to the analyst desk to break down that game some more. Thank you, Riv. And I do want to touch on the team comps. They were touched on a little bit there. Uh, as Dominate mentioned, banning out the Kogma after seeing the LeBlanc ban, a good pivot from them. But really what I want to look at is the fact that they came out with so many huge picks. Yes. So I want to just explain a little bit deeper the concept of power picks right now. The reason you can call them power picks, is they're generally safe to pick in the majority of situations, and they're highly contested. And the reason this champ select was so poor for NME is based on the bands, there were two power pick junglers up, Gragas and Rek'Sai, so there's no need to blow your first pick on the Gragas. The other power picks that are on the board, like the Rise and the Callista, don't have any things that match them. Rise was 100% pick ban in Europe last week, and Callista was 90% pick ban in North America last week. So we know those are the two, but they don't have anything that matches that. So by picking Gragas, they're allowing the Rek'Sai to fall down super far, giving two free power picks to Team Liquid, and basically making it so they're easily outnumbered, like three to one on the powerful picks. Like that's terrible champ select trading. Whether or not you want to build a poke comp or build a versatile comp or whatever you're doing, trading power picks to that level almost never works well. Yeah, there's a lot there. Like you talked about the first pick, Gragas, was really just mind boggling to me because Trashy's most targeted band and most picked champion in Challenger was the Rek'Sai. So picking the Gragas over it was just in and of itself really strange to me mm -hmm. because they could have picked the Rise. They could have let Team Liquid have whatever they wanted between the Gragas and the Rek'Sai. The only situation would be Quas being like, oh, I want to play top lane Rek'Sai, right? That's the only time they'd ever take both, which I don't think was going to happen. And the Thresh. Yeah, it's like, not even talking about Thresh because the other thing that you can that has been traded as far as picks is Alistair and Thresh is the two top tier supports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alistair was banned, therefore Thresh is now a higher value pick and they let Team Liquid get it in the second rotation as the fourth pick of their draft. Right, yeah, so it seems, it seems what happened then is that they got stuck in this idea of a team comp that they wanted to play, a style they wanted to play, which was a bit of this poke disengage, and that's why they jumped at the Gragas, because that's the jungler yep. that'll better allow them to Absolutely. do that. Yeah. But what, what you're saying is that they, need, they needed to recognize, based on the bans, the direction that this champion select was going and make the proper adjustments to disallow such high-priority picks to fall into the hands Absolutely. of Team Liquid. Absolutely. It's yep. a lack of a pivoting and champion select there, which is a fault of the coaches, but also they didn't just change their vision after they saw the bans come out. And they were like, well, did they actually expect Rise to make it through? And then they didn't pick it? Like, yep. that's just kind of a lose-lose scenario there. All right, and so... 
Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, so, all, actual so all of that happens before we even get into the game. Now we jump into the game, and we have a very unfortunate dive there from enemy early on in the lane swap. They're attempting an aggressive move to wrestle control into the game here. And I think part of it is the overcommit at, you know, as to why Team Liquid Boom. comes away I think with he three kills. I think he would have made contact without flashing there as well on Trashy's side. His body slam looked like that last part of the hitbox was actually still going to make it. Also, it's like you don't have Otter and Body Drop in position just yet to assist on the damage towards Quas. If they had just waited a couple seconds, you would have just waited it off. He can just sit under tower. Then you dive him. You're going to be in a much better situation. It looked a little bit to me like just jitters it was panic yeah because i think conceptually that was a good play for them rise yeah. is very dive under the turret and technically enemy had the people there before team liquid had rotated their uh support down mm -hmm. so if they just kind of move into the lane mm -hmm. and just cut them off well that, that's the thing. just Qua sit there because at that way you're going to create separation between the support and jungler as well as quas and create a kill on either on either side but by kind of having flashing it on one side, they spread themselves out, and then they just, they're fighting the turrets as well as the three members, because yep. they were outnumbering them regardless. It, right. It's one of those plays that I don't think they'd ever make in scrims, like that type of mistake, but it just seems like that's one of those new things to the stage. And if you did, you GG right there, and then you <laughs> <laughs> Well, so there's a couple things that I want, or a couple directions I want to go out of this. One is, you know, Team Liquid recognizing that they were in this tower dive scenario, and they did rotate their two members down. So it is, it is nice to see the development of strategy to counteract these early turret dives. They had all the information they needed. They had that ward there for so long. They saw the setup for it. They saw flares sitting in that bush. They saw Trashy wrap around. And they were like, all right, let's bait them into this. And then Quas throws a Q into the bush, and, tra and Trashy and Flares are like, we're still going to go with this play. So it's a lot of, it seemed like enemy was being stubborn in champion select and in game here, just kind of being like, we're not going to let them dictate the pace of the game. We're going to lose on our own terms. And then, Jet, the other thing I want to look at is for enemy, these teams that are going for early aggressive plays, when they don't work out, we're seeing how detrimental that can be to the rest of the game. Down 3K gold within a few minutes into the game. Is it... Would it behoove the newer, younger teams to play a more passive early game, at least give themselves the opportunity to move into a team fighting stage? Uh, I'm not necessarily sold on that. Like, basically, they were... Like I said, I conceptually liked the turret dive yeah. play because Team Liquid wanted to swap away and per almost uh, have Rise in the 1v2 and then just play that dive game and play it better. Uh, but Rise is a very diveable champion when you're sending four people over there. I, I think it's one of those things that uh, it'll take time for them to not choke in those situations because it did feel like they just misplayed that. And it's not a play that I think they're going to misplay often. So uh, continue with what you're doing if you're enemy. Change champion select, but in-game, uh, it was just some big misplays. Yeah, you're, you're not going to get better at tower diving and being nervous at the same time if you don't at least try it. Very good point. Well, 3-0 for Liquid now. We've got to take a quick recall for a break, but when we return, it's back into the action with Cloud9 versus Gravity. Keep it tuned right here. The North American LCS will be right back after this.